I just got this this morning. It wasn't in my notes. So it's on this envelope here. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. And he fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Continue. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands, come here, Bishop. Got to do this. Part of my assignment, stand right there. You just pick two leaders and tell them to come. Levine, come. Pedro, venga. Peter. Hold his hands. We're going to show you something today. He lifted up his hands. All right, you loose him, you loose him just for a little bit. You just hold your hands up. Keep it up. This is the posture of intercession. The raised hands. Bible says when Ethiopia shall lift her hands, she shall be delivered. So the raising of the hands is symbolic of intense prayer when facing intense warfare. But the hands began to get weak. Kind of dropped them a little bit. But then Aaron and her came. Because what he realized was when the hands were up, people were just being delivered and getting breakthroughs in the church. But when the hands began to go down, major problems started to come. But then these two realize, and hear me, one was a Levite. The other came from Judah. They came together with the leader. And they lifted his hands up. Listen to me. Problem sometimes, Bishop, is that they are drawing too much from you without putting anything into you. The demands are great, but you're one person. For this church to get the next move of God, we need an army to raise up his hands. Are you ready to lift up the hand of your leader? Oh God, oh God, I feel it coming now. Somebody open your mouth now. Shout in triumph. Shout for victory. Shout for deliverance. Shout because you're supporting. All right, sit down a little bit. Keep his hands up. Keep his hands up. Hear me. You all can sit down. So while these two are joining him in intercession, which means if you're a part of the leadership cadre of this church, if you're not praying for him, resign. Don't let me come back here and you're not supporting your leader. Lord have mercy. Watch me now. Aaron was prophet and priest. Judah was the worship leader. Hear me good. They were both leaders in their own capacity. But then come Joshua. You had a Joshua with a sword. Grab a Bible and come. Jesus. Jesus. So Joshua was in the valley with the sword. But Joshua's victory was dependent on the leader's intercession. As the leaders prayed, Joshua started to smite, smite a little bit, smite the Amalekites. 
Ask your neighbor, are you ready for the war? Come on, ask somebody else, are you ready for the war? Are you ready for the fight? Come on, get in father. Get in father. You're a part of the warrior group. Watch me now, watch me now. Got to deliver it. Watch me. So God had placed Moses in a position where he could command the conflict. He could command the conflict. But who was the main enemy? And we're going to rock the enemy out of South Ozone today. The enemy was Amalek. A descendant of Esau. Amalek. The philosophy of Amalek is oppose, 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 oppose. Anybody that loves to oppose, you are going to take yourself from under the covering of the leadership. You have a group of persons in South Ozone that don't like covering. Don't worry, I know what I'm talking about. This wasn't in the script. Amalek is after your wealth. So the spirit of Amalek is to drive people into poverty. But the devil is a liar today. And so is his mother-in-law. Are you understanding the preacher today? Somebody said, let's fight the real enemy. Let's fight the real enemy. The next thing about Amalek is that Amalek makes the people tired. Are you coming to prayer revival? No, I'm too tired. So tired. Weak. Anything that relates to spiritual endeavor, you can't manage. Can't do anything. Because the spirit of Amalek is trying to assassinate you. The next thing with Amalek is that Amalek goes after the stragglers. Those who are not keeping up. Some people, no matter what you do, they're not keeping up with you. If you call prayer, they're backing off. The spirit of Amalek is after you. Next to the spirit of Amalek, it makes you passive. Praying doesn't require all of that. I can pray in my bed. The devil is a liar. You've been praying in your bed for so long and ain't nothing happened for you. Some people just don't like to take instructions. Too opinionated. Sometimes a little education can make people so ignorant. Don't worry, soon done. The spirit of Amalek affects your prayer life. Notice. There are times when your prayer life goes in cycle. Sometimes you get a little bit weary. But then you catch yourself up. And you start to pray again. Yeah, you understand what I'm trying to say? There are some devils in this region. That we need to take out on assignment. Everybody lift your hand. The posture of intercession. And say in the name of Jesus. We wrote out Amalek. Now give a victory shout. And a victory praise. Somebody shout, come out, come out, come out, Amalek, come out. God, I feel something happening. Somebody shout, come out, come out. You're getting out today. You're coming out today. You're leaving today. You're being routed today. Come out. We're in the control room. We are in the prayer center. Lift up your voice again. We are routing Amalek. Get out of my family. Get out of my church. Get out of my life. Two points.
points and I'm done. Amalek is after your destiny and is after your inheritance. Does not want you to possess what God has already delegated to you. But we're going to rout him out today in the name of Jesus. The spirit of Amalek is a hateful, spiteful kind of spirit. When that spirit is upon a believer, them not like nobody. And anywhere they show up, there's friction and tension. Ever been anywhere and some people show up and the atmosphere just get tight? But today, in the name of Jesus, we are going to war against Amalek. Lift up your voice and shout victory over the spirit of Amalek. Oh, thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. And the last one. I could go on about Amalek, but I need to finish so you can get home and get back here. Amalek wants you to walk in disobedience and rebellion. Listen to me. If God gives a mandate, we don't need your approval to institute it. Who are you that I should consult with you when God has spoken? What a bright spirit. He didn't say anything to me. So what? So what? So what? I, I hear somebody talking in my head. They didn't say, so what if we didn't say anything to you? Who are you? Who are you? The great mountain that stands before Zerubbabel. You shall be made as a plane. And hear me. Lord God, I got to say this. And let me close that book, Vips. I, 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 I'll, I'll stop preaching. And hear me. Support for leadership does not only mean cover them in prayer. It means flooding them with finances. Not only that, not only caring in that way, but if you give less trouble, <laughs> you are helping leadership. Amen. Some of you are too old to be giving trouble. <laughs> Listen to me. Some older folks are having young people problems. God, I want to finish. At this stage in your life, you should be getting settled and retired. But you're as cantankerous as they come. Nobody wants to be around you. You're like a walking razor blade. But with or without you, with or without your permission, the church is moving on. Catch us if you can. But we have pulled out of the station. And we are not turning back. We are moving forward. Somebody says straight ahead. Straight ahead. We are going straight ahead. So I'm done. That, that last scripture was really for you but they needed to hear it so that they understand what their responsibility to you should be. I'm, I'm going to say this because you already gave me permission. That's why I asked for permission. You shouldn't be driving as much as you're driving. Where are the errands and hers to take over that responsibility? You shouldn't be closing up church. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me well. We have placed 
too much responsibility on him. Amen. He is not your chauffeur. He needs his rest like anybody else. Stop calling him after 11 in the night. He had no clue what he said yes to. But he said, when I give you the mic, just do what you need to do. And he made the mistake and said, profit, profit. So when you call on that, that unction is going to flow. There's a group of people that have no understanding of what honoring a leader is. The gift that you honor will always work for you. But when there's a spirit of dishonor, it tends to undermine authority. At one point, God said to the same priest, Aaron, were you not afraid to speak against him? Were you not afraid? Some people are too glib with their tongues. We're all Christians, but we're not all on the same level. We got to get this thing right. We cannot have fractions fighting within when we have an enemy to oppose without. Sometimes we spend too much time putting out internal fires and not enough time moving in a positive direction. But any time you start to pray, intercession becomes like a fire. When Paul was cast in the Isle of Melita and they were putting up sticks to get warm and they lit the fire, all of a sudden a serpent came out and wrapped itself around his hand, but he shook it off in the fire. Some things are going to come out after this meeting that is going to shock some people because the fire is going to expose what was there all along. It was there all along. So we have to support leadership. There are some things, I soon done, Jesus. There are some things that all you need to do is to say it, and others need to fulfill it. I've just been here for a few days, but the demand on you is sapping your strength and it needs to stop he cannot visit everybody and he shouldn't if i was ever pastoral aid director for this church i i take the ear out them carters <laughs> so it can't move we have gotten so used to him that sometimes the grace that needs to flow from him is not flowing not because it isn't there but familiarity has a way of reducing the flow of the spirit bible said jesus did not many mighty works in nazareth because they're too familiar with him your pastor is not your pal he's not your buddy he's not your friend he is your pastor and he must be accorded the level of respect that is due to that office. Am I making myself clear? Don't make me come back here and the business not sort out. There is not allow me to return. And you have not addressed the outstanding issues. Because it needs to be addressed. Let me say something that he, he would not want me to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. There are folks here today. That God has spoken to you on more than one occasion. To bless this man of God. Financially. And you have been ifing and hoying. I'm seeing about five persons. That their finances would have graduated. If they had obeyed the instructions.
you don't have to wait for a pastor's appreciation to do something special. As I said earlier in the meet in the week, if you're a person of prayer, you will get instructions in terms of what needs to be done. Sometimes one of you need to just take his car and say, sit on Bishop, we go service it. When I was an associate pastor at this particular local church, I, I drove into the premises. And these guys, a lot of them came from gangs and so on and got saved under my ministry. I drove in. The vehicle was really dirty. One of them walked up here and said, Rev, your vehicle, no is still so. Give me the key. Gave him the key. When he finished with it, it looked brand new. And he didn't want any payment. Some people in the church, if you're not offering them something, they don't move. They don't, they don't move. They don't move. Because the question is, what's in it for me? This man has labored assiduously and hard and long and untiringly. He must now be able to comfortably enjoy the fruits of his labor. We need another generation to rise up who will begin to shoulder responsibilities. Do things without him having to see it. He's having to see too many things. Too many things. Too common. My job here is to help to lighten the load. I charge you by Jesus Christ that you do good by him. Because some of you, your next level of breakthrough has been tied up to the dishonoring that you have done to the servant of God. That spirit is a spirit of Amalek. And we drive it out of salt or zone today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stop opposing. Stop condemning. Stop criticizing. If he gives a vision. I, I, I remember Elder. I was preaching to the church in Kingston, Jamaica. That was a hard church to preach. Preachers were afraid of it. I went there and a revival broke out. The genuine thing broke out. Massive revival. It was in a volatile community. But every night, it was standing capacity. People just coming out hungry for God. I should have concluded the Friday. And the thing spilled over and they begged me, can you come back and conclude on Sunday night? But on Sunday night at my local church, I was scheduled to preach for the week. I wanted to go back to that other church because I know I was there. And I wanted to finish it. So I called my bishop. And I said, Bishop, can you give me permission to continue that, look, that, that, that local church and I'll get you a preacher that is better than me to start the meeting? And he said to me, Doc, do what you have to do. And I was smiling, now getting ready to call the other church. And God said, listen to your pastor's heart. Don't listen to just what you listen to his heart. And the Spirit says, he's not in agreement, but he's not going to stop you. Not everything that they do, you agree with. Sometimes you see things, but you still allow it. Because you want people to realize that you're not trying to manipulate and to control them. Hear me good. I wrestled for a while. Then towards the end of Saturday, I called them. And I said, sorry, I can't come. But I'm going to teach you something here now. Even though I said that, my heart was not with it. I went to church the Sunday night. Church started an hour late. The praise and worship was the pits. Murphy's Law, everything that could go wrong had gone wrong. The atmosphere was heavy and I was mad. I sat in my vehicle and I said, I'm not going in until I'm ready to preach. Because I was, I was so angry. Look at what I could have been enjoying back there. And I have to come here. And I was mad. Almost time to go and I walked in. And hear me good. 
I'm, I'm a gifted speaker. I can preach. You wait for any time that I can preach. I preached good. Real good. 50 persons got saved. 50. And then God, I felt the Holy Spirit tap me on the shoulders. And he said to me, you were obedient, but you were not submissive. Submission comes from the Greek word hupotasso, which means to arrange yourself under the authority of another so that you support their endeavors. When he said that, I felt like something hit me. You can function in the gift, yet still be at odds with God. God using you does not in any way mean that he's approving you. God can fire you and still keep you working. So not because you're doing something means that you're doing God. The mistake we make is that we think that because we're used that everything is alright. No! The heart was the issue. Right there and then. Stand up, stand up, stand up, Ella. Right there and then. I went across my past and I hugged him up. Hugged me up. We, we, we're not homophobic. Hugged me up. I hugged him up. And I said to him, sir, I'm sorry. I said, I obeyed you, but I never submitted. I said, sir, can I submit to you now? I submitted to him. Thank you. My heart was in it. And he just rubbed my head and he said, Doc, it's okay. That week was the greatest revival I have seen at my local church. Too many people are ministering out of hurts. A heart that is injured and broken and in need of repair. Some people need to pull off the road and get in the station for repair. Because if you keep going on on that without getting treated, you're going to break down one of these days. I learned a secret. There's a fundamental difference between obedience and submission. A wife can obey her husband but not submit to him. We're not going there today. Because that's evident in this church. Mm-hmm, no. No. So we're going to have to do good by him. With all the prayer that is going on, there's a level of release that will only come when honor comes back to the house. Honor will release a greater wave of glory. Everybody bow your heads right now. Close your eyes. Shut everything out. Whether you're on the keyboard, the camera, the soundboard, bow your heads. Close your eyes. And in your heart, if in any way that a Malachite spirit may have influenced you in making wrong decisions, we're bringing repentance as a church today. If I had stirred up conflict or controversy, if I in any way have undermined anybody, if I have hurt people, if I have opposed that which is good, it's corporate repentance right of everybody. Search your heart. Search your heart. And whatever comes to mind, just whisper a prayer. Please, God, forgive me. Forgive me. I've done wrong want the revival to come but I don't want to hinder its progress search me oh God and know my heart try me see if there be any wicked ways in me cleanse me from every sin and set me free with your head still bowed 
if there are any persons here today that have not yet known the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, right where you are, just lift that hand that's where I could see it. I'm not yet a Christian. Anybody like that, just put your hand up real quick. I see that hand. Put it down. Is there another? I see that hand. Put it down. Is there? I see that hand. But everybody's head still bowed. All the persons who are not Christians, just meet me right here in the passageway right now. Just rise from your seats and come quickly. Every person that's not a Christian, meet me right here. Just tell them excuse and come. 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 Stand right in front of me right now. Stand right in front of me right now. Beautiful. Stand behind her. Every person is not a Christian. You're in this line, mommy? Okay, stand, stand here, stand like you're in.